Ooh. Okay, how am I gonna explain this? What's up, everyone? This is Reckless Fox here, and today I am reviewing um, Batman vs Superman. I actually got to go see it yesterday, and um, yeah. Um, <laughs> what can I say about the movie? Um, I didn't hate it. I mean, it was better than I expected it to be. I, actually, it was better than I thought it was going to be. Um, which is not saying a lot, though. Um, so let me get started um, with the review. So I'm gonna just split the. I'm gonna split it down. I'm gonna talk about the good parts of the movie and also the bad parts. And I and don't worry, it's gonna be spoiler free. And if you've seen it yet? I'm about to break it down for you. It's spoiler free. Don't worry. Okay. So I'm gonna just start with the good parts. Okay. Um, let's see. Visually, as usual, if you know what is that, if you've seen a Zack Snyder movie, Watchmen, 300, Sucker Punch, or even Man of Steel, and, um, the remake to, um, Dawn of Dead, there we go. If you've seen the, if you've seen any of those movies, then you know, like, visually, his movies do look good, especially Sucker Punch. Don't get me wrong, Sucker Punch is awful, <laughs> but when you look at, when you separate the plot from just the overall visual design, and just overall imagery, it was one of the best looking movies ever. Like it had, I had an original idea and everything, and yet it felt flat on its face. Superman and Man of Steel is another good, re another good example. Um, with Man of Steel, I remember watching it, and I thought when I first saw that it was the best movie of that whole year. And then I rewatched it when it came on HBO, and I'm like, what the hell was I thinking? Because this the script and it, it, it this is gonna this is gonna be the one thing I have to talk about when it comes to this movie is the script okay when it came to the script for Man of Steel it fell falling on its face you had great uh, Superman Henry Cavill was a good good Superman Clark Kent not that much but overall like the visual the visuals and you had the star power to do it and the script didn't really hold up to it but that's a different story visually the movie looks stunning it's amazing. Um, I really like the effects and whatnot, and all in all, it's a great looking movie, okay? Um, let's see, Ben Affleck. I know everyone, oh, I know what everyone is thinking. Is Ben Affleck good? Yes, he's good. He's a good Batman, he's a pretty good Batman, and good Bruce Wayne. And I'm going to talk about more about that later, because it, it gets into the territory that I really want to talk about that's spoiler free. Uh, but other than that, I, Ben Affleck did a good job. He redeemed himself, thankfully. I think he I think he redeemed himself because I think that's the one thing everyone was going by. Can't he be a good Batman and Bruce Wayne? I separate the two because when you look at like Michael Keaton, Christian Bale, and the other fuck nuts who play Batman and Bruce Wayne, uh, you have to separate by two categories. You need to be a good, either a good Batman or a good Bruce Wayne. And Michael Keaton, he was a good Batman. Not bad Batman and a good Bruce Wayne. Val Kelmer, shitty Bruce Wayne, good Batman. George Clooney played himself, but we don't even talk about Batman and Robin, so I don't know why I said that. Uh, Christian Bale's a solid Batman and meh Bruce Wayne, because it was never really about Bruce Wayne, it was about Batman until Dark Knight Rises, which I thought was really good because it focused more on Bruce Wayne as a human being and like what he is underneath the cowl and whatnot. With Ben Affleck, he did a pretty good job because it, when you when you look at the history of what what Bruce Wayne Batman and Batman that Ben Affleck's playing, you have to look at the Dark Knight Returns, which is a big influence on various things that happen in the movie. The fight with Superman, the overall suit that he's wearing, the and the Iron Bat suit, as I like to call it, that he wears when he fights uh, Superman. Um, let's see. What Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman. I and I went in. I didn't like Gal Gadot when she when they first announced I, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. I fucking went crazy because of the fact that I should be cursing. I'm sorry, but I went crazy because of the fact that Wonder Woman. When you look at Wonder Woman, she's supposed to be an Amazon, and I'm not. And, and no, I'm not talking about she needs to have big boobs and big butt. Okay, granted, that'd be kind of cool, but that's not the story. That's not the point. Amazon was big, like why, like Gina Carana big, Ronda Rousey big, Serena Williams big. That's how big they need to be. Well, not they don't have to be, but that's how big initially they're supposed to look. Um, 
other than that, like, Gal Gadot was honestly the best part of the movie, and she didn't really have a lot of screen time, and, but more on that later, uh, I think she, she's gonna do good, I mean, I'm looking forward to Wonder Woman more than, than ever, because I saw the, like, when DC and CW had their little thing, uh, where they were showing, like, like, clips of how Wonder Woman was gonna be and whatnot, I think they look great, and it was in World War One, so that, and we all know that World War Two is overplayed in most comic book movies, like Captain America, even though Captain America's my favorite, super, one of my favorite superheroes, but that's a different story. Uh, but I think with the whole World War One thing that's going, they're going to be doing with uh, Captain America, not Captain America, I'm getting much confused now, uh, Wonder Woman. With Wonder Woman, I think it's going to be really good. Algodot was good. She was good as Wonder Woman, and good Diana as well, even, but even though she didn't get enough, a lot of screen time, but I'm going to save that for later. Uh, Alfred. I love Alfred. Alfred was the best, for me, Alfred was the best character in the movie because he was the embodiment of Alfred from the cartoons and, a little, and from the comic books in which, from various comic books, in which Alfred is a sarcastic old man. Like, he is funny. Like, whenever Alfred's on screen and when he's talking to Batman, it's funny. Like, I, I laughed when Alfred, whenever it was like, when this wasn't like serious and when Alfred was helping Batman it was always funny I really enjoyed that um the fight now everyone wants to talk about the fight awesome awesome fight various problems with the fight uh, I have I have a few problems with the fight and I can't talk about it because it'll be a spoiler okay but Batman was whooping that nigga like it, like I said again the mo that fight is heavily influenced by the Dark Knight Returns. If you don't know what the Dark Knight Returns is, basically the Dark Knight Returns was what came out in the eighties, in which it was an older Batman. Crap was going on in Gotham. He comes out of retirement. He get the government and got got no. Let me go in order. Gotham and then the government wanted his ass dead. Like they want him to stop, or they're going to kill him. Specifically, the government because they at that time Superman was working for the government now. Just League got disbanded, crap happened, all types of crap, and then in the end, the towards the end of the comic book, Batman fights Superman, I won't tell you what happens though, because if you want, you gotta read the comic book, or watch The Dark Knight Returns, part one and part two, it's out on DVD right now, it's been out for like, what, a couple of years now? All in all, the fight was great, and I really liked the fact that, um, I think, for me, Ben Affleck, was a good older Batman. Granted, it's kind of mind-boggling because of the fact that in The Dark Knight Returns, Batman's like in his early to mid-50s, and Ben Affleck's supposed to be like in his 50s, and like, I don't believe the fact he's in his 50s. I think he's like late 30s, early 40s type thing. Well, I know, because, you know, post, it's modern era, so I, I, have, you know, I have to give credit to that. But the overall suit, they got the suit right. Like, I think, like, Image by image, the suit that bat, the Iron Bat suit that Batman wears, does resemble both the comic, book, the comic book very well, as well as the animated movie where uh, Dark Knight Returns. I think the Bat suit was the best part, not the best part. I'm sorry, the Bat suit was really cool. I really enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed the fight once again. It was a great fight. Um, let's see. <laughs> I wrote this down. I wrote this down. I'm not gonna spoil it, but here's the thing: if you hated Tim Burton's Batman because he had a kill death ratio that would make you faint, <laughs> um, <laughs> be on the lookout for what this nigga does in the dark. In not the Dark Knight Returns, in Batman vs Superman. And for those of you who were complaining about why Batman has a gun. In that one scene where you have that's one still shot where you have Batman, Wonder Woman, and um, Superman, and Batman's like holding the gun, like it looks like an M4, he's about to just blah 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 blah. There's a reason why he has it, and I won't explain it. Uh, you have to see it for yourself on why he has it. I whatever. Now, now on to the bad stuff. Again, this is gonna be spoiler free, so I'm gonna make sure I watch my tone and watch my mouth about various things. So here we go. Okay, so this I will actually leave the last part alone. I'll leave it to, at the very end. Um, wasn't enough screen time for Ben Affleck. Um, oh, I said Batfleck in this one. That's the problem. There is I, actually I'll I'll tie in the script uh, with it. 
I think because of the fact that, if for those of you who don't know, the original script is going to be written by David Goyer, the same guy who wrote Man of Steel, and which is the reason why Man of Steel suffered as much as it did. Then Ben Affleck's like, nah, nah, homie, look, I got, look, let me get, let me get my friend, okay, let me get my friend. Uh, I can't remember who wrote, I can't remember who wrote the, um, script, I think it was, uh, it was the same guy who wrote Argo. Originally it was written by Chris, uh, David Goyer, but then, he's like, look, let me get my friend. And then he got Chris Terro. Chris Terro's the guy who, um, wrote Argo. He, it was written by, he was, dude who's written, like, we, Okay, I'm taking. I'm doing one take. I don't care. It's my first video. My first video review. I'm, I'm gonna improve later. But uh, David Taro, the dude who wrote Argo, came in to uh, edit and stuff like that. But I think the I think Zack Snyder still had final say about how he wanted the movie. And I'm, I'm pretty sure he we we're gonna get more Ben Affleck Batman in the movie, but we didn't. There's that's the thing. Uh, it's not a spoiler. Hopefully, it's not a spoiler. <laughs> um, so there's not a not, there's not a lot of uh, screen time for uh, Ben Affleck and slash Batman, Batfleck. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, there were various scenes that were out. In my there are there are a few scenes in the movie that should not belong in the movie. I'll leave it alone right there. I will again. Spoiler uh, review will be coming later. So I I'll explain what I mean by that. Uh, Lex Luthor. Now everyone wants to. Now everyone wants to talk about Lex Luthor. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg portrays Lex Luthor. Um, who? Okay, so here we go. Here we go. So I didn't really have a problem with Jesse Eisenberg's performance. I think he was playing more of a hipster Lex Luthor, in my opinion. Um, which is not bad. I mean, it's you know it's modern era. I mean, you can't really have a. Lex Luthor the way he was. I mean, I think he was trying. I think he what he was trying to do was like embody Gene Hackman's performance as Lex Luthor. But I think uh, he, he didn't do that much of a good job. I, I don't even think that's his fault. Again, I think it was just the script. For me, it felt like Superman Returns, where there was way too much planning and too much Lex. Uh, that's the problem and. He acts like the Joker. Yeah, he acts like the Joker. Uh, again, I can't spoil it because there are various things that he does that I'm like, I think the Joker would have done that too. I'll explain that in later. Uh, and symbolism. Okay, symbolism. You remember the trailers where um, um, there's like, with Lawrence Fishburne, when Morpheus is talking to uh, Clark, he's like, no one wants to see Clark Tent, Clark, Clark Tent, Clark Kent take on the Batman and shit, and shit like that. Or the other trailer was like, Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent, I love bringing people together. He's like, oh, oh, not, oh, firm handshake, you don't want to fight with this guy. And it was like, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, like, we're going to do it, we're going to fight, we're going to fight. Like, no, no, we, we understand. It wouldn't be called Batman vs. Superman if these, if these niggas weren't fighting. If these niggas weren't fighting, then I, I understand, but... It's called Batman vs. Superman. We don't need to be led on every single time. Like, because, like, every time, it's, like, symbolism, symbolism, symbolism. Every time they're going to fight, it's like, well, you should like, you should take on him. He's like a god or something. Like, no, we get it. If 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 I want it to be told that Batman and Superman are going to fight towards the end of the movie or something like that, I, I would want I want to be surprised. I don't need to be told and beat over the head that... These two are gonna fight at one point, and I think that. And I think that when it comes to that, I think it was the guys who did commercials. It was their fault for that. I, it should have been left for surprise, even though we knew there was gonna be they're gonna fight. But you don't. We don't need the symbolism, uh, DC. It's Zack Snyder specifically. I'm talking to you, bro. We don't need the symbolism, dude. We get it. You're, they're gonna fight. They're gonna fight. I'm gonna watch it. Cause I'm a big kid. <laughs> um. And then, and here's the one I've been talking. Here's the one that I wanted to talk about the most. I want to talk about the script. Again, I think because of the fact that it was the final say for Zack Snyder, or whoever, um, there was not a lot of Bruce Wayne, and there was not a lot of Wonder Woman, which might disappoint everyone because, especially people who are really skeptical about Ben Affleck as Batman. I think Ben Affleck, for what for the amount of screen time he had, was good. I wish, and I really did think, I honestly believe that originally 
Ben Affleck was supposed to be in a lot of scenes, but there, he's he's not even in the scene, uh, movie a lot. It's mostly Henry Cavill and Lex Luthor and stuff like that. Henry Cavill, Jesse, I Jesse, Jesse, Jesse Eisenberg, and which sucks because Ben Affleck is the one dude that I'm like, okay, can you pull off a Batman? Considering the fact that you're about to be in a new solo Batman movie, which I, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> um, but when whenever he was on screen, like I think he did a good job. I wish he was on screen more. I wish there's more Batman. Batman. How do I how do I explain this without spoiling it? I don't know. I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even gonna talk about that then, if that's the case. I can't even. I can't even talk about why. I have a problem with the script because a lot of it is gonna be in the spoiler review of the movie. But other than that, I think I think what you guys want to know is: is this movie good? I didn't hate it. If I were to rate it, I mean, I really don't want to say you want you're, it's gonna be that Superman crowd, the Man of Steel crowd, where you either like it or hate it. Because I actually liked it. I thoroughly, I was thoroughly entertained by the movie. But if I were to rate it. Like if I was, I don't, and I don't like doing ratings from like one to ten. Who, um, it's above average. I can tell you that. Um, for me, it's like a seven at least. Um, so yeah, I would rate it a seven. Um, I'm not. I won't say I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna give it a thumbs down because, like I said, there are things I really, really liked about this movie, and there are things I really thought I really wish they would have changed. I go see that movie. Go see it for yourself. Um, you judge. You be the judge. If you like this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. If you don't, and if you're a DC fanboy who thinks I'm just being a, a salty Marvel fanboy because I didn't get my own my Christian Bale Batman back, give me a thumbs down if you want. Um, if you haven't yet, please make sure to hit that uh, subscribe button. Follow me on Twitch. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on SoundCloud. Cloud, and follow me on ScrewTech.com where I just uh, released not released, I just finished my blog for like top five characters, I won't get into nitty gritty, um, so there you go guys, this is Reckless Fox, uh, peace out, keep on wrecking things that are $20 or less, make sure, don't, you don't want, you don't want to spend more money on things that are more than $20, just saying, I'm out, peace out guys, hope you have a good day.